Welcome back, everyone, to this special Independence Day tribute. We, this hour, are remembering some of the fallen military from our region who served in Afghanistan and Iraq. Sergeant James Regan of Manhasset, he was killed in Iraq in February of 2007. He was 26 years of age and in his fourth tour of duty, having already served two in Afghanistan and one in Iraq. Rich Barabi spoke with Jimmy's father. They're the most elite and highly trained direct action force that we have in the military today. To hear Jim Regan talk about the U.S. Army Rangers is to hear a man speak with the kind of admiration and respect that is hard to find. They're versed in jungle warfare, mountain terrain, urban combat. They're the best of the best. You see, Jim has a special bond with this elite unit of soldiers. He speaks as the proud father of a ranger. Jim's son, Jimmy, served as an Army Ranger until he was tragically killed while deployed in Iraq. Jimmy has, was in his fourth tour of duty when he was killed. He had two in Afghanistan and two in Iraq. It was February of 2007. The United States military was entrenched in some of its most difficult days fighting in Iraq, and Sergeant James J. Regan found himself right in the middle of the action. Jimmy was 26 and a half years old when he was killed. So Jimmy knew what he was getting into. Jimmy was a highly educated kid from Duke. He was a Chaminade graduate. He was an All-American athlete. Um, you know, he knew what he was getting into. He knew, he knew the kind of fight that was happening. It was a risk that Jimmy and his family had acknowledged and accepted, but that did little to lessen the blow when Jim and his family received the heartbreaking news. We all knew that, but you never, you, you, you never expect one not to come home. The next few weeks were a whirlwind of conflicting emotions. Jimmy had been killed, but his death had not been in vain. And Jim and the rest of his family had some visitors who drove that point home. We had the opportunity of meeting about 15 of these young men when they came up for Jimmy's funeral, and they spent about almost two weeks with us. So through that process, we, we were very, very impressed with them. Some of the rangers that served with your son, what did they tell you about him when they came and visited your family? Yeah, it was really uh, special. It, it was a special time in a lot of ways, right? Uh, it's a, uh, it's bittersweet, bittersweet. Um, Jimmy was a uh, uh, very interesting kid, very interesting, very well educated, and uh, he walked a walk. And uh, <clears throat> my understanding was a very good soldier. Jim and his family knew that they wanted to honor the memory of Jimmy and the men who fought alongside of him. And so they started to look into ways they could be of service to the Rangers and their families. We just did not want to recreate the wheel. So a part of our due diligence was to check into different foundations. What Jim had found in his research was that although there are many different foundations designed to aid military personnel, to his knowledge, there had not ever been one dedicated specifically to the Army Rangers. And that was about to change. The main objective that, I feel, that we feel in this organization is really to focus on the Ranger and the family unit. Later on that year, Jim, along with a host of family and friends, created the Ranger Lead the Way Fund, named for the Rangers' motto. What do you think he would say to you about this effort? He would be uh, very embarrassed, very embarrassed, but I think very proud. And if you'd like more information, please visit leadthewayfund.org. We'll be right back.